everyone, I hope that you're all doing well and staying safe. My name is Vicky and this is Bay of the Kawapoo. Now I'm really sorry we missed last week's video, but it's been a really hectic week with my final university assignments and Bailey actually accidentally knocked a drink over my laptop, so it died for a day, but we got it all back together and it's all fine now. Just a note, today's video is going to be a bit more formal and educational. I'm going to be talking about what to look for when trying to find a breeder, our personal experience finding Bailey and what we paid for him. So just a disclaimer, today's video probably won't be fully extensive, but hopefully it will help people to make more informed choices when they're looking for a puppy of their own. If you think of anything that isn't included in this video, then feel free to include it in the comments down below and to help other people. So our channel's grown really quickly over the past month or so, and I want to say a warm welcome to all of our new viewers and a welcome back to our regular ones. So I think that our channel's grown recently due to a few things. Now that we're in lockdown, people obviously have more free time to look at YouTube and to find channels that they like that they haven't seen before. But also, now that we're in lockdown, more people are looking to buy a puppy or doing research into getting one. So since the start of our channel, we've always had people asking how much baby cost. Now I've never felt the need to disclose this publicly as I thought it was more of a private thing for me and my family but now feels like a good time to discuss it. So when I asked for people to guess the average range of a cowapoo between £500 to 3 k we got a mixed response between 66 people with the majority going for the upper end of around 2000 When I asked you guys to guess how much we paid for Bailey we got a really big range of responses such as £1750, £2000, 1200 1400 and 2,500. Some of you even guessed we paid 3,000 pounds. So an average between these guesses was around 1,800 pounds and we'll discuss later on if you guys are right. So I recently joined a Kawapoo community on Facebook where people normally share happy stories and pictures of their new dogs. But over the past couple of weeks, I've noticed a lot more harrowing posts about people being scammed and being taken advantage of in the current situations. So in some of these situations, people have put down large deposits or even paid the full amount up front to find out that the puppy doesn't exist. So in today's video, we're going to be discussing what to look for when trying to find a breeder, our experience, and hopefully we can prevent this happening to you and you can find a Bailey of your own. Now, Bailey was an absolutely gorgeous puppy, and if you've been on this channel at all, then I reckon you'll have already seen the video of Bailey's first week. But I'll include this clip just so you can see what he looked like. That's adorable. <laughs> oh. Are you gorgeous? That's flailing arms. <laughs> I'm a bit cold, so uh, this isn't the steadiest angle going. Yay! <laughs> oh. So it's worth noting that over the past two months, over £300,000 have been scammed off people looking for a puppy, which is an absolutely huge amount. So if you're concerned of looking for a puppy during this time, it's completely valid and hopefully this will help you out. So today's video format is going to go a little bit like this. Firstly, we're going to discuss Cavapoo guide prices and talk about the colourings. Then we're going to talk about finding a breeder and spotting a bad one. Then we're going to talk about things to never do when looking for a puppy. And finally, we're going to talk about our experience finding Bailey and how much we paid for it. So if you do like this video, then please leave a like or a comment as it really helps our videos to reach further. And feel free to subscribe to see more videos of Bailey in the future. So Cavapoo's colourings vary in demand, which means that they often have different price differentials depending on their colour. So just to begin with a little bit of background knowledge, a commonly referred to Cavapoo is an F1, like Bailey, where the mother is a King Charles Cavalier and the father is a Poodle. This can be done the other way, but most commonly it's the Cavalier as the mother. So for anyone that gets a little bit confused, the F just refers to the generation of the puppy. If an F1 is then bred back to one of the parents, most commonly the Poodle, then the puppy tends to be an F1B. And if two Cavapoos are bred together, then they are F2s. So in the past, the F2 has often been cheaper than the F1, but recently I've seen them being priced at the exact same. So Cavapoos can cost anywhere between £800 to £3,000, and in America this is different again. I would only advise people to pay between £800 to £1,600, as paying more than this encourages more and more people to breed Cavapoos for profit, they won't always have the best intentions of the dog at heart. Also, paying higher prices means that people can get away with charging more and then it stops people from being able to afford cavapoos that can give them perfectly good homes. So, cavapoos tend to vary in price with sable or black being at the bottom end and apricot and red being at the top end. I've even seen hundreds of pounds of difference within the same litter due to the puppies being different colours. So, I think it's worth noting here that if you're not too bothered about the colour, then you can get an equally cute dog for a lower price. 
So recently, camera food has been growing in popularity, I think this is for obvious reason, as they're great with families, great with allergy sufferers, and they're also just adorable dogs. So currently the Cavapoo is the 18th most popular breed on Pets for Homes out of 244. So at the moment I think the prices are really reflecting the market. There's a lot that goes into breeding a good and healthy dog. So I will say that performing regular health checks, going to vet appointments and paying for vaccinations are all quite costly and quickly rack up the price of breeding a puppy. As well as that, you're also paying for the breeder's time that goes into rearing them, and we can't underestimate the amount of time that takes. So, especially in small litters that are often smaller than anticipated, the breeder still needs to recuperate the cost that it costs to look after the mother while she was pregnant, as well as the cost of the new puppies. Another important point to note is that whilst it might seem like a lot of money for a dog, a dog's life expectancy is often over 10 years' time. And when you divide that cost over 10 years, I think it really shows you how cheap a dog is compared to the amount of love that they bring to your life. Especially with Bailey, I do think he's priceless and I'm sure you will too once you own a dog. So just another point to note is that the Carapoo won't necessarily be a cheaper type of dog just because it's a mixed breed. So both the parents are kennel club registered and they're also quite expensive to own which all reflects into the price of buying a cover poop. It's also worth noting that the price that you initially pay for the dog is only the beginning of the expenses of actually owning one, especially if you buy one that needs immediate health treatment or medical care. So what we really want to stress here is that no matter what you choose to pay, your dog will be priceless to you. But it is good to know what's a fair price to pay and to make sure that you're not being ripped off by opportunistic breeders. So the first thing that we really recommend, especially when you're looking during these times, is to be patient when trying to find a breeder. So I think currently the odds of finding a breeder with everything that you're looking for that just aligns perfectly with the time are very slim. So there's also sometimes changes in circumstances which mean the puppies are available within short notice. In this section I'm going to tell you everything that you want a good breeder to have and what to look out for to make sure that you get a healthy pup and a good deal. So the first step is that you want to know all about the parents. Are the puppies with the parents? Does the breeder own them both? Is one a stud? You want to know all these kind of details. And then you want to double check that the puppies are at least with the mother and if not then you want to walk away immediately as this probably is a puppy farm. If the puppies are with the parents and nothing seems off then you want to get some more details about them. So the questions that you want to ask should be more surrounding the mother and you also want to know how many litters she's had as she should never have more than three, ideally more than two. So another thing you want to establish are the time frames with which they breed the mother. So if she happens to be three but she's already had a litter and this is a second one then she's probably being bred too often and the mother can become exhausted. So health tests are also really important. You want to make sure that they're getting regular vet checks and that they've also had a series of tests. These tests are all performed by vets and they'll all give certificates to prove what they've done. So any good breeder should be able to show you these certificates. Where have you gone? <laughs> The parents can have heart examinations to make sure that they don't have mitral valve disease which means that the puppies are less likely to have heart murmurs. And these tests can be performed every year so it's important to make sure that any breeder certificates are up to date. So dogs can also be tested for hip dysplasia and progressive retinal atrophy which is shortened to PRA which can lead to blindness. So that's really important to make sure that the dogs are PRA clear. Okay, so I seem to be tiring Bailey out a little bit, so he's going to have a lie down for a moment. From here, we want to see three main things that mean that the puppy's been to the vet and they've been looked after. So we want to make sure that the puppies have been wormed, we want to make sure that the puppies have had their first round of vaccinations, and we want to make sure that they've been microchipped. Now, a breeder must microchip the puppies by law, and you then register the puppy under your name at a vet when you bring them home. Be aware of people that say that they can't do it under current situations, as most vet practices are operating from microchips and the first vaccinations, as they're really important to do. So when you do these checks, it's also good to check that the puppies have been socialised in an environment that's similar to your home to make sure that they'll settle in well. Now, it might seem like I'm listing off a load of things and it might seem impossible to find them currently, but you really shouldn't settle for less and there are plenty of good breeders out there that will make sure that they do right by you. So if you do find all of this, you might start to question, is it too good to be true? In normal conditions, you bring up a breeder, you probably go around to the house, interact with the puppies, check out the person that you're buying from. Right? But in these current situations, you can't really do that. So under these circumstances, it's really important to call the person on the phone and to check them out properly. Now, I'd always recommend you to call them over the phone rather than email or text, as it's a lot easier to lie when you have more time to think of a response. Now, it's good if you can check if the breeder has a breeder's license, but they won't always have this as they don't necessarily have enough litters or breed full time, which would mean that they have one. But even if they don't have a license, it's important to check out the person that you're buying from properly and make sure that they are who they say they are. 
So this brings us to our third section, which is spotting a bad breeder. Now, sometimes poor practices are really obvious and you can spot them immediately from a mile out. But unfortunately, fraudulent breeders aren't always as easy to spot. So I realised that this was such a problem when just the other week on the Facebook page for the Kamapu group, I saw that two different women had posted the same photo of a puppy saying that they were so excited to go and collect him. Now, unfortunately, they'd both paid money for the same dog that actually didn't exist at all. So it's really important to be careful in this and make sure that you're not funding people that are taking advantage of the situation. When you see photos from a breeder's advert, you should always be able to contact them and ask them for more photos and they should always be able to comply with that. So under these circumstances, if the breeder sends you more images, I would really advise you to reverse image search. So a reverse search engine is basically just like Google, but you upload a photo and it'll tell you if the picture's been taken from anywhere else and it's really helpful in spotting these kind of people. I'll leave a link to an engine below called TinEye, which you can use but you can also find this yourself just by googling reverse image search. If you do that and the pictures don't come up from anywhere else, then you're safe to proceed. I'd advise your next step to be arranging a video call, which you can do over Zoom, Skype, WhatsApp, Facebook, or any app really. Now, it's a really easy thing to do and all breeders should be able to do it. So if they say no, then I would immediately walk away as it's a bit of a shady practice. So when you have your video call, I'd advise you to request them to do something like this, like I am now, where they can hold the puppy and you can see how they interact. And it just shows you that it is real. So if the breeder will only show you the puppies from the other side, then there's no guarantee that it actually is a live feed. If the breeder isn't willing to do this, then I would see it as a bit of a red flag, as it can be easy to fake a video where you only have the puppies on the camera. So they can do this by playing you back a video and just recording it or like on the video call. So the best way to get around this really is, is to have the breeder holding the puppy in front of the camera like this. Although it might sound a bit excessive, you can also ask the breeder to pick up something random, although I would advise against the spoon as this is quite a common thing to request. So if you're confident that the puppies are in the breeder's possession, then it's great and you can move forward. The next step is to make sure that the breeder is in the location that they claim they are. But you want to make sure of this as you don't want to drive a distance or send a courier to go and collect a puppy to then find out that it isn't there. Now this could be a lot harder to prove, but you could request to see a breeder's driving license or you could even request for them to share their location with you on apps such as Facebook Messenger. So I just think it's a good idea to request them to share their location more or less at the same time as they have a video call. So this makes sure that the location of the video call is where they say that the puppies are being held. But ultimately, it's also important that the breeder shows an interest in you as well as their dogs. So any decent breeder will care about the home that the puppy is going to as it should be a home for life. So if a breeder seems too focused on the sale, then just leave it straight away as they don't have the puppy's best intentions at heart. So four, we're going to talk about things to never do. When dealing with breeders, it's a major red flag if they ask you to make a large cash deposit or to pay up front. You should never, ever, ever pay any large amounts of money, especially the full amount. I know that some people have been asked to pay deposits in excess of £500 and sometimes even the full amount before they collect the puppy. Now you should never do this as it just encourages bad practice, but you can send small amounts of deposits such as £250 or something like that and I'd recommend you to do it through PayPal rather than a direct debit. On top of this, I'd really advise you not to pay the full amount until you have the puppy or until the courier is with the puppy. Now you just need to try and minimise the amount of times that you can be taken advantage of as much as possible. So finally, I'm going to talk about our experience in getting Bailey and how we got it. So we found Bailey's advert on Pets for Homes website and the breeder was actually just 20 miles from our home, making them really local. So Bailey is an F1 Cavapoo, which is the first generation, and he was bred with a red King Charles Cavalier mother and a red miniature poodle. Now they were both kennel club registered and good pedigrees and they made this gorgeous boy. So Bailey's mother was the personal pet of the breeder and Bailey's father was a stud dog who actually lives really locally to our house as well. So it is worth saying that our story isn't the most conventional one and it did happen quite at the spur of the moment, which links back to earlier on when I mentioned that sometimes circumstances change and the perfect puppy might just be available. So before we had Bailey in our lives, we actually had a wonderful Shih Tzu called Poppy, who was 10 years old when she sadly passed away whilst I was in my first year at university. But as a family that's always had dogs and we absolutely worship Poppy, we missed her terribly and we really needed the company of a dog. So a short while after Poppy passed away, I signed up to a website called Borrow My Doggy, where you can walk dogs in your local area that have owners that might work full time or go away at the weekends and situations like that. So we actually found one of my neighbour's dogs on there called Hugo and me and my sister really enjoyed walking him and looking after him. So then in early May we went on a family camping trip and we met a lot of dogs that we really liked that turned out to be a Cavapoo. This meant that not too long after that we decided that we wanted to get a Cavapoo of our own. 
So one evening whilst I was home for Easter, I was having a look on the Pets for Homes website and I came across a puppy that was really local to us that looked exactly like what we were after. Now, very fortunately for us, Bailey's original buyer had dropped out, meaning that Bailey and his sister were re-advertised on Pets for Homes and they were at a lower price due to being slightly older than normal. We actually called Bailey's breeder up, we went round to the house and we came back with Bailey that very night. It was all quite unexpected, but as a family that have always owned dogs, we were well prepared to bring a puppy home. So this means that, contrary to everybody's guesses, we actually bought Bailey for £950 at 10 weeks old. So he was originally listed at £1,500, which I think is more accurate to the market price, given that he was the most popular colourings. But we like to think that it was fate that we brought Bailey home, as a month or two before that, when me and my sister were looking at puppies that we liked the images of, I'd actually screenshotted Bailey's original advert, which had the original price of £1,500. So I do like to think that it was fate that brought us together. So I wanted to share the story of how we got Bailey and how much we paid as I wanted to show people that you can get a great dog for a lower price than what seems to be the going rate at the moment. Now it is worth also noting that we do live in the northwest of England and the prices for dogs up here seem to be slightly cheaper than down south towards London. I would reckon that towards London a common price to pay would probably be between £1500 to £2000 but I would never recommend paying more than that. So despite us paying for Bailey, another option is that you can also look at adopting a dog as there are thousands of dogs that all need good homes. So despite the Caribou's popularity, there are always dogs that need rehoming which includes this breed and it's a great thing to do if you can offer that. So ultimately what we really want to say is that regardless of what you choose to pay, your dog will be priceless to you. We hope this video has helped people to make some more informed decisions and again if you do think of anything that isn't included in this video then feel free to include it in the comments below to help other people. Let's like say, don't be disheartened if you can't find a dog at the moment. Waiting is the better choice rather than paying over the odds and potentially being ripped off. So we really hope you enjoyed this video and found it informative. And if you did, then feel free to leave a like and press subscribe to see more videos of Bailey in the future. We do have a regular dog vlog upcoming, which should be out in the next couple of days to make up for the one that we missed last week. So we'll see you guys soon.